Uh, can you please enable the screen share for me? Uh, Kalyan, I hope you can share now. Yeah, let me check. Yeah, now I can share. Thanks. Hope everyone is able to see my screen. Please ping on the chat if you are able to see my screen. Okay, fine. So this is our uh, dashboard as soon as we log into the application okay yesterday we have seen with sign up page on how do you sign up the user registration all these things so today we will do some uh, modification to the forms and we add some validation messages to the form we see that today okay so before that let me show, show you the course content so we have done with a uh, course overview this we have done getting started with oracle application express we have done with using sql workshop we are done with creating database application okay managing page in page designer we have completed this okay and creating and using form that we are continuing that okay and then we have completed using themes and theme styles Okay, and we have completed this also, adding additional pages to our application. Okay, so these things we have completed so far. And today we will be discussing uh, reports. Develop, uh, we'll be completing this uh, remaining part in the forms and we will be adding the computation processes and validations to the form. And then we'll be working on reports okay so let's uh, start working on the remaining part of creating and using the form today so this is our form so now i have very big fields in my page so i want to reduce this fields to little bit okay so how do i do that one okay so click on quick edit and then say click on anywhere on the form it will take you to the page designer now this is our form fields okay so click on this form create form okay come to the right side here you see the column span okay select this Say six. Now you can see here your form will be look like this now. This is how your form look like now. Okay. You have saved the changes. Click on this. Refresh your page. Now click on sign up page. Got it. So now it looks little bit better. Okay. now here we have active so i want to say active is yes or no i want i don't want to enter i don't want to enter the value here i want like radio button to select yes or no or by default when the user is created it should be active okay so how do i do that so quick edit on this click on this so here you came to the active page this is called page item click on this come to the right side here click on the type okay say you have a radio group okay select the radio group so as soon as you select the radio group 
come down here you see list of values select this and select static values okay and you say no i do you don't want display any extra values and you don't want display any null values okay and then select the static values click on this now you say display value is active and my return value will be a return value means what it will say if you select this active it will save in the database as a but while you see on the screen here it will be displayed as active for you but when you select it in the database it will store as a that is called return value and that is called display value okay inactive so inactive means i store in database as i okay so click on okay click on save so now come here see how you got you got two buttons right active and inactive you can select either one okay so by default i want active should be selected why because whenever user is created right, it should be active by default okay so how do i do put the default value for it we get it on this come to the right side here you see default click on this say static put a okay now save the changes so here you to see number of columns as i told only one column so both are in single column see if i want side by side i say two columns and then click on save now you will get this side by side got it active and inactive by default active will be selected as i have given the default value as a so a means it is active so by default it will be active will be selected and for displaying the uh, columns in two columns so i give earlier it was one i have given two so it will show in two columns now okay and this is a mandatory field okay now username is also a mandatory field and i want to show like red mark here also so how do i do that one so click on this come to the right side say template is required okay and click on save changes now open it again in and then see one second say 
required floating okay save your changes again now you look at it okay so it means it is marked in red means it is compulsory you have to enter the value for it okay and user type also requires value so come to the user type click on this come to the right side come down say required floating okay click on save changes now you see so username is compulsory you have to enter password you have to enter compulsory user type means whether you are a customer or you are an admin or you are an agent okay so email also is compulsory for for you and source source means from where you have registered your thing okay so click on quick edit so if you register from here then the source should be sign up page okay so i want that value to be default i don't want to enter this value okay so i just say hide this value okay now come down and then say default value as sign up s i g n u p okay sign up page now see the page what it so you just enter your username you enter your password and you enter your user type okay user type you don't know how many user types we have for this application so i wanted to give you some drop down list for the list of available users okay and then email so now i want to give one select list here drop down list for you to select the available user list of roles for this application so in this application we will be having three roles one is administrator another one is customer and the other one is agent okay so click on this user type click on this come to the right side select the type say select list come down list of values select static values okay and say display extra values as no and say null values as yes here say select user type okay now select your values here so display values i say i say admin is the username okay and then i say agent and then i say customer so this many roles i have here and my return value should be admin agent customer so i say administrator
customer service agent and then customer okay so these are the display values and this should be my return values which should store into the database when you select these values okay click on okay save the changes so come to your registration page now see so select user type that is what we have mentioned here okay null display null value and then you can just select this you have administrator customer and then customer service agent okay now you can select the appropriate role if you are a customer just select the customer here okay like this now let us go to our table click on sql workshop object browser let's go to our user accounts table and then see the data in it okay so there are two people with so i have one admin one two agents and let me put these two people as customers okay now let me check my so for customer i say this one or just a simply say cust okay in the short form so i update this for this users there is no key. so i just update user type as customer okay and you see here for active what values i have given here active means a if i select this in the database it should store as a so then here it is y so so i'll change accordingly to this okay i say active means yes inactive means i say no okay just save the things now apply changes here now for this user also i will update it to customer so apply changes so now i have one admin i have two agents i have and two customers i have these are their details username this one password is this one for them okay now let me create one more user now here and then then see how does it will store in the database okay click on sign up page and then say test underscore user i say four okay test underscore user four and the pass password i will give the same password for all the users and then select the user as customer and then say active so why it is not showing default means here we have changed this one and we did not change here okay click on active come down go to default value it should be y active means y inactive means no as we have changed the values here see here we have changed the value so we have to change the default value also now come now you see so by default it is active now you can put your user test user underscore four 
in the password you copy the same password user type as customer and email you can see test underscore user for at the rate gmail.com okay now i click on create so my registration has been completed now let us see is this user is created or not created user for okay so hope you guys understood what what username we have to repeat can you please tell me yeah so required and required floating means i will tell you about the error message i will tell you i will that is the next step validations comes the next step i will tell you i will tell you so let me tell you all the things so how to give the mandatory fields now select this one click here come to the right side here you have the template so if you give required floating you will get like this okay if you say required your field look will change okay now you see you will get like this okay this is called required if you say required floating you will get this kind of field so all the fields are in this format so i want to put username also in the same format okay hope you have understood required means it will give the star mark and floating means you will get like this if you say only required you will get like this okay i say again required if you say require above then you see how it comes it will give like this required above means okay size of the fields i hope you got the different difference between required and required floating fine now let me tell you size for the fields we get it on this now let me change it to required floating save the changes so now you got the same now fields length how i decrease the fields length okay so click on the create form come to the right side here you see the column span say it to 6 and then say earlier it was automatic let me do it again and show you now i'll put automatic click on save changes okay now check you it again so now you got the very big fields here okay you don't want this many big fields you just want small registration page so we get it on this click on form come to the right side column span say 6 so you can see if i put automatic here you can see this one it is getting increased if i say 6 
it is decreased this is how your forms will look like okay click on save changes now you look at it okay hope you understood now i want to change the label of the name so here it is create instead of create i say register i want to say register you get it on this button right click on it click on it come to the right side here is the label say r e g i s t e r register now you come save the changes come here and see got it your name got changed okay this is how you change the label name okay hope you are able to follow me please ping on the chat did you understood so far now you log in with workspace okay then you will get the quick edit of all the edit links at the bottom if you have logged in with workspace and then run the application so log in from the work space okay like this log in from the workspace okay and then you open your application and you run it from here then only you will get the edit links at the bottom and then you will have the quick edit there otherwise you will not have that okay now i want to put some validation messages to this click on username come to the right side validation click on yes okay click on save okay now click on sign up now i am not entering any values here i click on register see fill fill out this field fill out this field these are okay fill out this field you got like this message but it is not meaningful to you you want some meaningful message so how do you do that meaningful message to your application we get it on this you just remove you don't want any validations for password also you don't want any validations and then for email you don't want validation save the changes so for email if you see <clears throat> at the top sub in the setting sub type you are fill this email field so select email okay trim spaces trim spaces means you suppose if you have any spaces between before and after the email id that will be removed while you enter here like this if you enter your email id like this then before and after there are spaces like this if you enter like this in the same way it will store in the database whenever you enter your email you enter this way only you will not enter give the spaces before and after so even though if you enter like this if you use this trim leading and trailing leading means front trailing means at the last so it will remove the spaces okay that is the reason i select this one okay and coming to the user now i'll just save my change for all the things you will do the same 
so my subtype is username it is text so i select text so trim spaces before and after for password you will not have subtype okay now for user type also you will not you have have the subtype it is in select list so you will not have spaces for it active this is a radio group you will not have spaces for it for email i have already entered that's it okay save the changes now look at this now try to register it so user registration failed you see this message got fired okay why this message got you the registration got failed you can see in this process create form this is the process cannot insert null into user accounts table means i did not enter any values here so all are null values so it is throwing error so now i want to display the error messages meaningful error messages so how do i do that one now okay so you are in different way let me tell you i think you have selected report with form we have to select only form then only you will get one create button okay you have to select only form while creating this registration page you have selected report with form i guess so to get the quick edit you log in from the workspace you know how to log in from the workspace right so from here this is the workspace once you log in do this your uh, workspace name username and then password login you will get like this run your application from here then only you will get if you log in with normal user with this link okay then you you will not get the edit links at the bottom okay you have to log in with this url and then try to run the application then only you will be able to get the edit links don't log in with application link application link is different this is called application link and your workspace login link is different you can see here okay log in with this and then try to run the application you will get the edit links okay now i want to give validation messages here so quick edit on this right click on this say create validation okay create validation you will get one here right click on this come to the right side put username underscore vld means username validation okay give some name of your own or you can say user validation here select plsql function returning error text okay plsql function returning error text select this option click on this see click on this arrow mark it will get big screen now right here if if 
if you want to access the page items you specify colon colon p2 user underscore name is null then written and if so please enter username okay this message i want to display if p p2 underscore username what is it so this is your page item okay so if this page item is null means blank okay if this is blank then display this message that is what i am telling here okay click on this if your code is correct it will say validation successful click on okay and then here you see display location here in line with field and in notification so it will display near the field and on the right side also it will display i will show you how does it will look like now click on save changes now click on sign up now click on register got it please enter username here also it displays here also it displays if you click here it will take you to that particular field okay so as you are displaying here you don't want to display here so what you do is click on click edit come to the right side click on the validation message come to the right side say display location in line with field so if you say in line with field then only here it will display here it will not display now we will see so click register got it now it is looks better if you want here also you should say in line with field and then notification then in both the places it will show if you want only in line means near the field it will display hope you understood the validation right guys please respond on the chat if you are able to follow me is it clear how to add the validations to the form guys i need response from you are you able to follow me if you are not responding then i cannot move further i think you are not understanding then please respond me on the chat so then i'll get some energy to go forward and tell you the things please respond on the chat are you able to follow me or if you have any doubts please ping on the chat i'll be answering your queries you just follow what i am whatever i am telling here and try to do the same parallelly okay if you are not getting it once you get this application copy to you then you can take a reference of it and then learn it quickly okay okay let me repeat the validation part again so now let me add the validation for another one so for username i have added already okay so for password i will add the validation click on quick edit click on password and then quick edit so come to the password 
right click on it create validation you get some new here click on it come to the right side say pwd vld password well this can be of any name of your own whatever the name you want you can give it come down in the validation part six select the type plsql function written error text select this one click on this arrow mark now write your code if colon p2 underscore password is null then written please enter password okay and you want to put your password minimum characters as eight characters then you can do like this else if l e n g t h length of password is less than 8 then written password must be minimum eight characters okay if you want to check like, like one 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 upper case one lower case one alphabet like this then there is other way of checking using regular expressions so if we tell that you will not be able to understand it i am telling you now itself so let's do not divert the things i am just telling you the basic things for you okay if you go to the regular expression then you don't know what is regular expression and how it it works everything so i'll just tell you normal things so this is the function inbuilt oracle function to get the length of the string length of pw this means whatever the data you enter here it will get the length of it okay length of this and it will if it is less than eight then it will show this message okay save this okay here said display location here it is in line with field and notification if it is like this then it will display under the field and on the right side or on the notification bar it will show so if you don't want like this just say in line with field and save so now it will show only under the field okay now i have done my changes now let me click on sign up now say register see i got please enter username and please enter password okay now i enter my username okay now i click on register so i have username entered so now it will not display the error message it is not an error message it is a validation message okay now i say i enter password i entered only four five four characters now i click on register see password must be minimum eight characters got it when you enter eight characters then it will not ask So I have entered eight characters. Okay, now it will not ask you to. Now let me add, add validation for email also. Okay, as a mandatory field. And then user type 
Pascal. So, copy this code from here and you can just change the page name, page item name. Come click on email, create, click on it, right click on it, create validation. Okay, come to the right side, say email VLD, email validation in type, select PLSQL function and error text. Select this one and just change this name as email. That's it. Okay, please enter email. Okay. So check this name you have to give here P2 E email. Okay. Then click on it. So change the display location to inline with field. Save the changes. Now come and check it out here. So now I enter username and I enter password eight characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now I'll click on register. So I have user name entered and I have my password entered of eight characters so it will not display so I have not entered email so it will ask enter email please okay hope you understood right in email also see click on quick edit click on email so if you see here I selected subtype as email okay now if you enter normal value like this it will say please enter valid email address see please include at the rate in the email address then only to, if you allow normal also it will not allow that is displayed because of this so that is why we give the email okay hope you understood right So able to follow me guys, please respond on the chat if you have understood so far. Any doubts, please ping on the chat. Guys able to follow me, please ping on the chat. I'm waiting for your response. I am not getting your question. Giving error at email and password. What is what is it mean? Guys, please respond on the chat if you are able to understand. If not, please put your queries here. I'll I'm here to answer your queries. Okay. Like in the same way, I want to put message for uh, this user type as well. Let me put it. Click on this, right click on this, create validation. Click on this, come to the right side, give some name. User type VLD.
see here select this not PLS call expression it is PLS call function returning error text you have to select this one not PLS call expression if you select this it will not show you have to select this one okay hope you understood right Shamshodin, if you are, are you able to understand or you want anything else? Is that what you're looking for? Okay, okay, fine. Thank you. Now put your code here. Now just give user type. Okay. Click on okay. Okay. Save changes. Now come here. Click on sign up. So I'm not entering any values. Click on register. Able to get right. So please enter username for this. Yeah, sorry. I want to change the name here. Wait. So you say user type. Please select. Okay. And then password. I am entering password. Okay. And for email, I am giving email. Okay. And for username, I am giving username. Fine. So for username, we say in line with field. And for password, I say in line with field. And for user type, I would say in line with field and for email also say in line with field okay save the changes and then now look come back here now click on this got it guys hope you understood See, if you log in with this URL, you are not going to get the edit links. Let me show you. If you access with this URL, you will not get the edit links at the bottom. Okay. okay. So you have to log in from your workspace. Okay. Let me log in from the workspace and then show you again. Okay. So get this URL. URL, you make sure you log in with this URL. From here, this is the way you have to log in. Get to your workspace name. Username. And then your password. Click on sign in. So here I accessed only application. So I'm not getting the edit links here. Now in this, in Chrome browser, I logged in with workspace. In Mozilla, I logged in with only 
application url so i am not getting any edit links okay. okay now come to chrome open application builder open your application click on run see now you go to edit links at the bottom now you understood hope you got this guys please respond on the chat mohammad did you get the what you are looking for great guys please respond on the chat are you able to follow me please make a note of the things if you practice and ask now we will not be able to complete the other other concepts or topics okay great okay you just copy, uh, make a note of your uh, make a note so that when you get this application copy all these things then you can have a look clearly and create your own application if you start uh, practicing now itself in the session we will not be able to move further you just write uh, do running notes if you want anything to be noted okay okay practicing things you can do it after the session when you are free okay and if you have any doubts you can ask in the telegram group they will be able to help you there okay fine now we are done with the validations and done with field sizes all these things now let me see we are done with creating using the form we are done with validations we are pending with computation and then processes okay and now we will discuss with developing the reports okay now this is about user registration and then form form validation all these things now let me log into the application so i am logging in with the admin user so now i am into the application now here you see i am not having any pages here this is a blank application now i want to add one one more tab here okay and i want to say that as an form okay so how do i do that we create it edit page click on the edit link this is a home page so here you see it is a demo application here you see demo application i want i don't want to show as a demo application I i want to change my application name to some customer service agent okay so how do i change this name here and then here i'll tell you you know okay so click on this application link so this is your application click on edit application properties here is the name change this customer service agent 
ओके अप्लाई चेंजेस नाउ रिफ्रेश योर पेज so it got changed here okay now if you want to change on the top so from where you are going to change it come here click on edit application properties you see user interfaces here yeah. click on user interface here you see logo click on this change this here service agent apply changes now come refresh here. got it so let me repeat it again so this is your your home page as soon as you log into the dashboard click on application builder open your application click on edit application properties click on user interface come down here you change the name it will change here okay so now let's look where we want to change this one click on quick edit edit on, on this so it will take you here yeah. so here you change the name so if you change this here title it will change here on the tab okay now it is demo application now i change it to service customer service agent okay now see now this will be changed title means he yeah sorry guys i got disconnected to network issue let me share my screen uh, please can you enable the screen share for me sandeep or hemant can anyone please uh, enable the screen share for me it is disabled thank you guys able to see the name got changed here okay you change the name here okay and then on the top you see still demo application if you want to change here click on the home page part and then you change the title here okay click on save changes now you see it will show here as well okay following me right
guys please respond on the chat now we understood how to change the application name right if you want to change guys i need more response from you guys are you able to follow me or not if you have any queries please ping on the chat i'll be able to answer your queries if not i'll be moving further now to the next topics i need more response from there are 140 people on the meeting and i get only response from 10 15 people please respond okay so now you know how to change the use uh, application name here and then here okay now i want to add a new page to my application here there is blank only home page we have apart from it we do not have anything here so now i want to add a new page to my application so how do i add it so this is my application okay i open my application here you see create page okay so click on create page okay now i say click on report click on report now i say interactive report okay click on interactive report give name as interactive report okay and then say bread crumb what is bread crumb so bread crumb means you will get a link at the top to to go back and forth to the pages okay i'll show you after creating it what is bread crumb so parent entry would be my home page okay so you will get a link from home page to interactive report here after creating it i'll show you now click on next give name here page mode is normal click on next so here if you click on create a new navigation menu entry you will get one entry here after home with the name interactive report okay so i selected create new navigation menu entry now next to the home you will get one navigation menu entry that is called interactive report okay now say click on next now you want to select your table name so on which table you want to display the report okay so click on data source okay local database source type is table and you select your schema and click on this dotted lines you get the table select that table okay click on create so a report has been created successfully and you are into this report okay now here you can see run button click on this run button see you got one navigation menu entry here interactive report and this is your report you can see this is called bread crumb okay this is called bread crumb now we are in interactive report if you click on this link it will go to home page that is called bread crumb okay click on interactive report so if you click on this is called a bread crumb okay now this is called interactive report okay now this is this is a table user accounts table that i am displaying in the form of report here this is called interactive report okay hope you understand right how to create a report now and how to create a navigation menu entry please respond on the chat
Guys, please respond. I need more response from you people. Okay, then great. Okay. So this is called interactive report. Okay. Now let me tell you here. So here you have the password also. I don't want to show the password column here. So now how do I hide this column? There are multiple ways to hide the password option. Click on quick edit. Click on this report. It will take you here. Okay. You see the columns here expand this come click on password and then say type as hidden column okay click on save okay now come to the report refresh and then see so password column got hidden okay Hope you understood, right? Guys, able to follow me? Fine. So there is another way also. Let me remove back this hidden column to plain text and then save the changes. Now run report again, password column is back. Okay, so for time being, click on actions, click on columns. So you see, do not display. If you don't want to display anything, double click on it, okay? So just select this column and click on this arrow mark or if you double click also it will move to the left side okay double click it will move to the left side okay so this password column should not be displayed that is what it mean okay the source column also i don't want to display double click on it it will move to the left side click on apply changes and then click on report save report save as default report settings select primary report apply changes that's all okay this is another way of hiding the columns okay now you see password column got hided and sign up column got hided okay understood right if you have any queries please raise your hand so that i will look at the chat window to answer your queries if you have any doubts okay okay so click on actions click on column so double click on it it will come to the right side these are used to adjust the columns okay up and down okay if you click this straight away it will go to the top this is one level if you click here directly it will come down okay this is one level this is totally to the top and bottom okay now apply changes so the columns are back now okay now i want to arrange this source to the last so how do i arrange it click on action column select this straight away down if you click this if you click this one level up if you this okay apply changes so arrange now i want to save my report click on actions report save report save as default settings and then primary report apply changes okay your report has been saved now 
again i'll tell you click on actions click on columns double click on password double click on source apply changes columns got vanished you have to save your report otherwise when you log back and log in again again they will be displayed there that is the reason i want to save my report as default report settings primary and then apply changes okay hope you understood this is the other way of hiding the columns okay hope you understood right so now i will tell you another way of hiding the report columns so quick edit on this click on interactive report okay come to the right side okay you see here table name is user accounts i don't want to give the table name i want to write my query so here you see the type select the interactive report right come to the right side say type say instead of table or view just say sql query now we got the query automatically here okay so you validate your query this will automatically frame you the query now here if you don't want the password column just remove it or you just say double hyphen means it is single line comment so that column will not be shown in the report and then source column as well single hyphen okay two times you give hyphen and then you remove the comma at this is the last column so remove the comma okay now click on okay save changes now run your report understood guys following me i hope you understood right hello guys i need response from you okay fine thank you okay fine this is about interactive report this is the search bar here if you want to search any specific user you can search here click on go so you can search this specific user also okay again you click on this it will you will see all the columns report here you have one more option click on drop down if you want to search in all columns you directly put the name here what you want to search if you want to search in specific column select the specific column here so i want to search in only email id column click on email and then search for this email id and then click on go okay like this again if you don't want click on this cancel button it will be vanished you will get all the records so now you have only very less records so you are able to see all them here when you have some hundreds and thousands of records then you have to search it to get the particular record okay like this column wise you can search here or normally also you can search here and click on go okay hope you understood right okay now click on quick edit click on attributes come to the right side here you see pagination 
select the type now it is x to y so you see only six suppose there are some hundred uh, thousand records then how are you going to know how many records are there totally in the report then you say x y of z okay pagination click on attributes come to the right side under pagination type say row x y of z then say on display location bottom and then right it is there i want to say bottom top and bottom right okay top and bottom so save the changes now you are able to see at the bottom only now i told here bottom and then top right side so here you will be able to see here and then here also now refresh the report got it you are able to see here and then here it means one one to six of six means totally you have six records now you are able to see one to six records here okay hope you understood now we get it on it come to attributes see maximum rows per page okay now i have six records here in one page i want to show only five records then i mention five year number five okay now i say save click on attributes okay come to bottom right side under search bar maximum rows per page put it to 5 okay click on save changes uh, refresh your report see now there are six records totally but in the page one i told display only five records so only five records are displaying click on this arrow mark the sixth record will be displayed here okay Again, click on previous button. It will go. Hope you understood, right, guys? Understood? Please respond on the chat. Please put your queries on the chat if you have any. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. That's part of it. Yeah, I'm back. Guys, I am back. Are you able to hear me? Please ping your queries if you have any on the chat, whether you have understood or not. Guys, please respond on the chat. 
whether you understood or not, if you have any queries or not. If not, I'll move further for the next topic. Okay. Shall I? Okay, I'll move further. Now click on actions. Okay. So I see format. Click on actions. Come to format. Say highlight. Okay. Click on highlight. So I want to say active. Okay, give some name to it, active. So highlight type is, I want to highlight whole row. Okay, so if the person is active, I want to highlight them. If the person is inactive, I want to highlight them in red color, saying that the person is inactive. Okay, so color, I say red color. Text color should be normal as it is. Okay. Select the color from here. Red color. And the active status is, is it, select the operator is equal to put your value. If is equals to no, then I want to highlight that. Apply changes. Okay. So currently there are no user has inactive. Now I'll update one user as inactive. Okay. Let me say like this person as inactive. Okay. I say no. Update it. So updated. Now refresh your report. Click on next. See, this person is in next page. So, this is what if this person is inactive. Okay. Hope you understood, right? Guys, able to follow me? I need response from you. Guys, no response from you people. Please respond on the chat, whether you're able to understand and follow me or not. Okay, fine. Let me move further. Now, I want to highlight admin. So admin with one color, agent with one color, and then customer with another color okay so how do i do that click on actions click on format click on highlight so give admin and then i want to give green color for admin select user type is equals to admin apply changes so admin will be highlighted with green color okay so for customer i want to give another color click on actions come to format highlight so give customer i want to say orange color select 
user type is equals to customer so customer is in orange color okay so for agent i want to use some other color format highlight agent i want to give some blue color select user type operator is equals to agent click on apply changes okay now go to the next page and then see for this person earlier i have given red color as he is inactive as this person is customer for customer i have given orange color so he has changed to orange color now i want to make this as an red color only for active column as he is inactive i want to put it as a red color so how do i do that one click on this inactive okay so click on this click on inactive now say here row instead of highlight row just yes, say cell okay and then select column is active operator is equal to and expression is equals to no so only now particular cell will be highlighted though he is a customer he should have orange color and as he is inactive only that inactive column should be red in color hope you understood right got it okay now let me save the report click click on actions click on report click on save report and then default report primary apply changes so now i want to download my report so how do i do that one click on actions see the download option click on download you have this many formats to download i want to download in okay i want download in like pdf let's click on pdf so pdf report got downloaded let me open it i think there is issue with the pdf download it is not able to open here okay let's try for another format csv so this has been downloaded the color formatting is not downloaded why because this part has been enhanced in next version so you are not able to download the coloring part here you will be able to see only on the application report but not in your download file okay for pdf they are having some issues so in this is an academy version so there might be having some issues that's the reason you are not able to open the report even though you could download it okay see i downloaded this report i tried to open it it is not getting open there is some issue with it not able to open the report okay so that is how you do even you can email this report also click on email okay so select the format you want i want csv format
to email i'll give my email for now and then show you okay and then cc if you want to put anyone you can put bcc also if you want anyone you can put body i say please find the attach report okay so i say apex interact report click on send okay so i should receive an email now see i got an email open it got the report right this is the report i got in my email able to see the report right and you can search this even here also whatever you want click on search this is also not working here even though you have the search option fine so this is how you will be able to send the emails okay guys are you able to follow me please respond on the chat if you are able to follow me okay let me go for other topics so this is about interact report downloading the report highlighting the fields hiding the columns whichever you don't want putting the paginations all these things okay highlighting the cells highlight this is called highlighting the cell this is called highlighting the row this is called paginations all these things okay now i want to create one more report under this saying interactive grid okay now how do i create it click on application okay this is our application i want to add one more page the page is of interactive grid click on create page click on report click on interactive grid so view report name as interactive grid say grid crumb parent entry is interactive report okay so click on next so here if you want to get new navigation menu entry click on create new navigation menu entry so home interactive report the third one will be your interactive grid navigation menu click on next here you see editing enable currently it is no i'll put it as it is i will show you after creating the report also we can enable the editing okay like modifying the data there okay so source should be table owner click on this dotted lines click on your table name click on create so interactive report has been created and here it is so click on run page see now we got interactive grid okay and you might not see any difference here in interactive report and in interactive grid you see all the same options 
then what is the difference between interactive report and then interactive grid even you can highlight in interactive grid as well you see format highlights you can do highlighting here as well okay so as i told you when creating i just told editing is disable i say no that is why it is not able to editable here now i say click on quick edit report so come click on attributes come to the right side say edit enabled is no so select it to yes okay if you say yes then you will be able to add the new row to your report you will be able to edit the existing report you will be able to delete the report okay now click on save changes now come run your page now we you see you got save button add row button now you can edit your data here okay so you are getting like this username it should be normal text you are getting text area so how do you change it you don't want like this i want like this kind of field so how do i change it come to the page designer expand your columns click on username you see type is text area change it to text field now save the changes run your report see now we got here it was showing some small box now it is text field password also customer type okay email also you can edit sign up you can edit it now here there is blank values for last two people i want to update them as sign up just copy and then paste here for this two for one person again i'll update for another person click on save so change is saved so for this person you have updated the data earlier it was blank you updated with sign up now one more user you can update click on save changes changes saved now you refresh this you can see changes has been saved already okay this is how you update the data okay now i want to update one more user to inactive so how do i do that one click on this say no click on save changes so changes saved okay you can see in the table also you can see data would be changed see for earlier it was blank it got updated and status also it got updated both the things so what are the changes you do this report is based on this table so changes will be a make effect in this table whatever you do changes in this report okay hope you understood right guys please respond on the chat able to follow me okay i'm moving further topic okay so now i shown you how to edit the data now i want to add a new record to my report so there are six records now i want to add one more new record how do i do that click on add row so i got added a new row here so i say test underscore user 5 password i say test at the rate 5 i want to say as 
customer okay student should be active and email id test underscore user five at the rate gmail.com so say s i g n sign up click on save changes said i have added one record so now it is showing seven records you can see here also you get seventh record got it you have seven records that this is the one i added right now okay so in interact report also you will be able to see the seventh record click on now you see you have seven records he is a customer and the status is inactive so it is in red color okay so this interact report also is on the same same uh, table so you will be able to see changes in this also interact to grid is also on the same table okay that is the reason so now you know how to edit the existing data on how to add a new record to the table how to add the existing data in the table and i want to delete one record so how do i delete it click on this arrow mark, this lines okay so select delete so it got striked off click on save record removed and it got deleted only six rows you have earlier it was seven now it is change it to six records so now you know how to add a row how to delete a row by clicking on this select the row okay and then click on this delete row even you can add multiple rows at the same time and delete multiple records or multiple rows you can update at the same time so now you see i i want to add two rows okay two times i clicked on add row now say test i say test 1 2 i say test 6 and then test 7 and then i am updating the existing row to test 8 okay so i put password test two records i inserted one record i am updating i have given username as 8 i say agent i say customer active is yes test 7 at the rate gmail.com i want to update this person email id also to test8 at the rate gmail.com okay i just update this to 6 and then so i added two records Okay, you can see the arrow marks whatever you are inserting and updating you can see last two records all are having blue marks so you are inserting all the row two rows whole columns and in for this this record you are changing this one and this one you have entered eight here you have entered eight here test name you have changed and email id you have changed so it is in remark okay now click on save see two records got inserted you got eight records totally and existing record got updated okay you can add multiple rows at the same time you can edit multiple rows at the same time and even you can delete the multiple records at the same time okay now i want to delete this record i want to delete one two and then these three records now test user 1 2 3 4 5 this is correct so i want to put these records and i want to delete remaining records test 7 6 8 
I just selected them. Click on any of the line here. Click on delete. Okay. So I just selected them. Okay. Click on delete row. Click on delete row. So three rows you have deleted now. There are strike. Click on save. See three records got deleted. You have only five records now. Okay. Hope you understood how to add the data to the table how to edit the existing data, how to delete the records from the table. Understood, right? Guys, please respond. Able to follow me? I'm waiting for your response, guys. Able to follow me or not? Do you have any queries? Please ping on the chat. Guys, I'm waiting for your responses. Please ping on the chat, whether if you are able to follow me or not. If not, I can move further. Okay, then fine. I'll move further. So now we have created two reports. Okay, here you see interactive report, managing and customizing we have seen, managing, customizing, interactive grid we have seen, interactive report and interactive grid. Okay. This is called developing reports and these three we have completed today and creating using forms also we have completed. Okay. This also we completed. So this part is totally completed and this part is totally completed. This part is totally completed. Okay. And in this part we have completed this and one part of this we have completed validations. So tomorrow we will be looking at application page controls, computation, and then processes. Okay. And then implementing navigation menu in your application. We will see this now. Okay. Using themes and theme styles, we have already completed. Implementing security in application, we will see it tomorrow. Tomorrow we see this part and then this part. Okay, and this part as well. Okay. Now let us go with last topic for today's session that is implementing navigation menu in your application. So whenever you create a page, you just select create navigation menu entry here. Let me show you here. So click on create page. Okay. Click on blank page. Just for showing purpose, I'm adding just a blank page. Okay. I say blank page. Again, I will delete it. Okay. So normal page mode. Okay. Click on next. So here you create, select create new navigation menu entry. Then new navigation entry will be created next to interactive report. You can see first is home, next is interactive report, next is interactive grid. So the fourth one will be blank page. If I click on create this one. Okay, now let me create it. Click on next. So click on finish. As I'm creating blank page, I don't want to select any table name. So my blank page got created here. 
So refresh this. See, I got a blank page here. There is nothing on this page. Okay. This is how you create navigation menu entry. Suppose this one you created from create a page. Now I want my custom navigation here. So as these both are reports, I want to add one more navigation menu entry here as a reports. And then I want to link these two reports to that report section. So how do I do that one? That we will see now. And then we'll close for today. So come to your application. So this is our application. Click on shared components. Come to the navigation and click on navigation menu. Click on desktop navigation menu. Now you see we have four navigations here. These are the four. Okay. Now I want to create one more. So click on create entry. Okay. So I don't want to put any parent list entry for this. This is my parent. This is a target. This is a separate entry. So give the name as REPO or reports. Okay. So here target type. I don't want any target. I said no target. Okay. So I given reports name and then I say create entry. So I have created one reports here. Now you refresh, you will see one entry here. See, got this. When you click on this, nothing happens. Why? Because I said no target while creating. I said no targets. So that is why nothing happens here. Now I want to link this interactive report and an interactive grid should be linked under this one. When I click on this, it should show at the bottom these two reports. It should show. How do I do that one now? Come here. So open the interactive report. Here you see parent list entry. So for interactive report, the target page is fourth page. So if you click on interactive report, it will take you to the fourth page. You can see the fourth page. Okay. So now parent entry, there is no parent entry for this. I will give parent entry as reports. Okay. Now apply changes. So refresh your report. Interactive report will be under this report section now. Got it. Now we got one arrow mark. You got the interactive report under report section. In the same way, I want to add interactive grid also under this one. So click on interactive grid. So for interactive grid, the target page is five. If you click on this, it will go to page number five. You can see page number five. Now I select page list. Click on reports. Parent entry list is reports. Apply changes. So you can see parent entries report. These both reports will be under report section now. Refresh your page. So you can see now this both came under this. Now if you click on interactive report, it will go to the interactive report. And this is called a breadcrumb. If you click on this, it will go to the home page. Now click on reports, come to interactive grid. Here you get the, this is called a breadcrumb. Now I am on interactive grid. If I want to go to interactive report, I can click on this. I don't want to go here and then click. I have this here itself. Click on interactive report. It will go to interactive report. If you click here again, it will go back one step back to home page. Okay, like this. Click on interactive grid. You are on interactive grid. If you want to go to one step back, click on this interactive report. If you want to go two step back, click on home page. Got it? 
that is called bread crumb hope you understood how to create a custom navigation menu on how to add the linkage to between the navigation menu and what is bread crumb okay so we have completed this navigation implementing navigation menu so in this we are left with only implementing security in our application and in the, and in this we are left with application page controls and this part this part we completed today already validations okay one and then this two this one we'll see in tomorrow's session okay hope you guys understood uh, can you please ping on the chat if you have any queries for today if not we will be closing the session for today hope you have understood today's session if you have any queries please put it on the chat if not we will close it for today okay so come to your application if you want to create your custom navigation menu here you come to your application come to shared components okay and then in navigation click on navigation menu click on desktop navigation menu here you will see the list of available navigation menu here okay these two are uh, you can see these two are under this parent entry so parent means under this report section you are having these two you are able to see them here and for blank page and home page it is there are individual entries so you see there is no parent entry for them okay for blank page and for reports and then home page there is no parent entry they are the main tabs okay now i want to add a new one click on create i want to add forms tomorrow i will tell you the form so i am adding the navigation menu for it now only form is the form is the main navigation menu i don't want any parent entry for this i said forms i said target is nothing click on create okay now i created forms refresh this you can see i have one tab created here navigation menu now i will link this blank page under this forms and i will rename this blank page to simple form okay click on blank page change the name to custom form and then parent entry to forms apply changes so refresh it you can see we have two tabs one is reports under reports tab we have two and again forms we have custom form if you click on this custom form it will take you to <clears throat> page number 6 you can see so the target is for custom form the target is page in this application page number is 6 you can select the page numbers from here also if you click on this dotted line you can select the page where you want to navigate when you click on this tab okay i have added only blank page here so tomorrow i show you how do you add a form in the blank earlier you have seen from here like creating a form from create page for registration page i created a form from here click
click on create this one i have selected and then i have selected here as a form so that is the reason now i will not do like this there is another way as i told here it is a custom form that is the reason i created a blank page here i created a blank page and i want to do it manually everything i'll that i'll show you tomorrow that one okay so hope you guys understood what is the difference between interactive report and interactive grid and what is the functionality of the both and how to add the navigation menu and how to link them on how to do the form validations also you have learned here on the sign up page correct on how to add the select list how to put the radio buttons how to put the default values for this all these things okay so that's all for today yes you can create you can create anything any application you can create by using apex okay so guys if you have any queries you can ping on the chat otherwise we will be closing the session for today thank you so much for your time okay uh thanks kalyan thanks for your time it was great hearing to you so guys if you don't have anything like let's uh, wind up for the day and we'll meet back again tomorrow okay hemant uh, thank yep. you so much we can yeah. leave for the day yeah. thank you all have a great yeah. day thank you guys thank you so much we'll meet up in the tomorrow session same time same link bye bye